Battery technology has changed dramatically over the years. But when you need raw power to start a locomotive train, you need a classic lead acid battery. And a very large one at that. And, as every train operator knows, if you want a dependable, long-lasting train battery, you call Surrett in Spring Hill, Nova Scotia. Although the chemical makeup is unique, the technology contained in a lead acid battery is fairly simple. Lead and an acid electrolyte. The lead is formed into positive and negative plates or grids that store and discharge the electricity. The grids are composed of a molded lead frame that is filled with a lead oxide powder. This lead oxide powder is made by first melting large 55 pound soft lead ingots in a Barton pot. The Barton pot contains a rotating paddle that slowly turns the molten lead into a powder form. The process is mostly automated in order to create a powder that will last and hold a better charge. The powder is tested on a regular basis to ensure that it meets company specifications. Once ready, the powder is stored in a giant hopper until needed. The grids that will hold the oxide powder and some of the other connectors are made by hand in the molding area. To make connectors, a worker scoops molten lead using a giant ladle and pours the lead into precast molds. Once the lead is hardened, the mold is emptied and another connector is poured. The grids are molded by machine and are done in a variety of sizes depending on the particular battery model being manufactured. Molten lead is poured into a mold where the grid is formed. Once it has quickly hardened, it travels through a pair of rollers and is then trimmed to size. A worker then inspects and piles the grids for future use. Any cutoff material is sent back to the melting pot for reuse. Once the grids and lead oxide powder are ready, everything is sent to the pasting oven. Here, grids are loaded onto a conveyor by hand. A mixture of water and lead oxide powder is then pressed into each grid to form the battery plates. The plates then pass through an oven that dries the oxide mixture so that the plates can be easily transported. A robotic arm then takes the plates and gently piles them onto pallets. From here, the plates are placed in a dehumidifying oven to extract any remaining moisture. Because the chemical composition of the negative and positive plates is unique, they are distinguishable by color, with the positive plates being orange and the negative gray. The positive plates are wrapped in a unique insulating material in order to prevent a short circuit. This material will allow the acid to flow through, but prevents the positive and negative plates from touching. Once they're complete, the plates are stacked by hand, alternating positive and negative plates. A robotic arm then lifts the plates as a single group, the number of which depends on the size of battery being made. The terminals of each plate are then cleaned, fluxed with an acid paste, dipped in solder, and wiped. They are then placed in a mold where lead terminals are created and permanently attached to the plates. This creates a complete battery system. Once ready, the plates are placed on a conveyor for further processing. Here, a worker places the plates in a plastic case while ensuring the positive and negative terminals are in the right location. He then places a lid on the box.
which is then sealed by a machine. Another worker then tests the seal and solders connector extensions on the top of the newly created battery. Because batteries do not generate electricity but simply store it, they need to be charged. Surrette battery utilizes a number of giant chargers that operate at 300 to 400 amps each. That makes for a very large electricity bill. First, a worker adds temporary connectors to a series of batteries so they may be charged as a group. He then attaches filling tubes and electrical connectors. The acid electrolyte mixture is added to the batteries, but also cycles through a cooling system as the battery charges to ensure they don't overheat. The cooling system uses cool water from the now abandoned Spring Hill mines. Of course, batteries this size aren't going to start a train. That's why each of these smaller batteries is later connected in series to create a much more powerful battery. This particular battery will contain 18 smaller 2-volt batteries linked by lead connectors to create a 36-volt battery. First, a worker removes the temporary connectors. then places each battery or cell in a larger plastic case. Another worker then attaches and solders connectors in order to make the larger battery. Once the lid has been attached and cleaned, the finished battery is packaged for shipment.